Hello and welcome to my Vorkath on a budget video. If you have not yet beaten Vorkath uh, and you've seen videos for it, they all recommend Dragon Hunter equipment, full bandos, ferocious gloves, um, things like that. I could not afford them. I tried to do it on a budget about five or six mil instead. Now, as you can see from my setup, the first thing you will need is full void. I have the full elite void, which does give a plus 2.5% uh, um, to my damage as well as a small prayer bonus. If you only have regular void because you haven't beaten Zolra or there's something else in the Western Heart Diaries that is preventing you from doing it, that works just as well. The next thing you will need is a salve amulet. Um, salve amulet works with void, it does not work with slayer, and obviously a slayer helmet doesn't work with void either, um, but void and salve amulets work together. You do need to get it imbued, whether it's at the nightmare zone or somewhere else. Uh, when you imbue it, it does have a ranged damage, uh, an increased range damage effect against undead, which is what Vorkath is. The next thing you'll need is an Ava's device. I have the Ava's assembler. Um, you can also use the Ava's accumulator. The only difference is that assembler gives a plus two range strength, as well as a very slight defensive bonuses and plus four more to your ranged accuracy. Uh, so if all you have is the accumulator, that honestly is totally fine. Uh, here you can just see this, the basically what the difference is. I'm not taking it off, but just to make it easier. For your weapon, you can choose the Dragon Crossbow if you, um, or the Rune Crossbow, or the Dragon Hunter Crossbow. I went with the Dragon Crossbow because it's much cheaper. For the shield, I have the Anti-Dragon Shield. It does not give the same negative uh, bonuses as the uh, Dragon Fire Shield. And of course, for the Ring Slot, I went with the Archer's Ring Imbued. If you're an Iron Man and you don't have access to a Dragon Crossbow or an Archer's Ring, you can use a Rune Crossbow instead um, and an Explorer's Ring 1. Um, the Explorer's Ring 1 will give a slight prayer bonus, uh, and the Rune Crossbow won't be able to use the Dragon Bolt Ruby or the Dragon Bolt with Diamond. You have to use the Adamant Bolt Ruby and the Adamant Bolt Diamond instead. Lastly, if you do not have access to Blessed Dehyde Boots, you can use uh, Snakeskin Boots instead. I will also be using a, a Slayer's Staff um, with Crumble Undead Autocast for the Zombified Ice Spawn, uh, which just makes it a lot easier. For the potions, I have a normal ranging potion rather than a divine ranging potion. Um, if you're an Iron Man, you can find, I think, one or two dosing grubby chests as well as like drops from various monsters, so it's easier to get than a divine ranging potion. Uh, for my anti-fire, I do use the uh, extended super anti-fire. If you cannot make it because you don't have the herbal lore level uh, or you can't afford it, you can use a regular anti-fire potion instead with the anti-dragon shield. Um, the only difference is you will take a maximum of 10 damage rather than the super anti-fire potion and the shield will take a maximum of zero. And for my anti-venom, I'm using an anti-venom plus. Um, if you cannot make anti-venom plus or you can't afford anti-venom plus, um, you can also use a Guthix rest, a Guthix rest. Um, that will reduce it from a venom to a poison and then you can use an antidote on that. As far as I'm aware, antidotes will not remove venom or reduce it from a venom to a poison. For the rest of my inventory, I am using just two prayer potions um, because this is a demonstration. Um, normally, I use about four. Um, and then for my food, I am using all um, manta rays. Um, depending on your cooking level, um, you can use basically sharks if you're an Iron Man. I wouldn't necessarily go below sharks. Um, mainly because this is basically going to be a question of how much damage can you take um, before losing or before beating Vorkath. Uh, so it's always important to bring the highest healing food you have available to you. There are many ways to get to Vorkath. I prefer to have a uh, water birth teleport in my house and then just take the quick travel to Relica. It requires really no walking. You can also go to Lunar Island and have them kick you off. Um, and then you should end up a little bit closer than the water birth island uh, travel. Or you can always set your house to Relica portal and then just run there um, to this dock from uh, the house portal teleport. Uh, basically whatever is easier for you. Before we get started, one quick tip I wanted to mention um, is that if you're not confident with your ability to um, kill Vorkath the first time or two, um, if you think you're going to die, if you're kind of nervous about his attacks, uh, I first did it by three iteming um, Vorkath. Basically just have three 
decent items with you um, and an inventory full of just really cheap anti-fire or lobsters or something like that. Um, that way, when you die, it doesn't really matter. Um, you don't have to pay the 100K to get your stuff back. Because um, when I was first starting out, 100K did mean like a lot of money. Uh, and now, of course, it's a lot easier and I don't have to worry about it as much. Um, but if you're starting out as well and it's easier for you to do that, that is something I recommend. Um, these are just some tile markers I have on the ground, by the way, for when I try to melee him, which I still have not been successful in. And now that you're ready to fight Vorkath, let's very briefly go over his attacks and his special attacks. Vorkath has a total of eight attacks, six normal attacks and two uh, special attacks. Uh, of his six normal attacks, he has a ranged attack, a maged attack, and four different dragonfire attacks. Um, the ranged attack is a spiky ball that shouldn't hit you if you're praying. The mage attack is a blue ball that will hurt. And then, of course, the dragonfire attacks. The first is a pink one that will turn off your prayer. Just use the quick prayers to turn it on. The second dragonfire attack is his dark green one. It will envenom you or has a chance to. The third dragon fire attack is just normal dragon fire, shouldn't hurt you. And then last is his insta kill dragon fire attack. This does not count as one of his special attacks, it's a regular attack. Just move two tiles away and you should be totally fine. The first and least dangerous of his special attacks is the zombified ice spawn. He freezes you in place and then sends the spawn out to kill you. If it touches you, it does 50 damage. The easiest way to deal with it is to switch to a slayer staff and cast crumble undead or use it from the spell book, it'll kill it instantly. The second and more dangerous of his two special attacks is the Acid Pool Barrage. As you can see here, I immediately try to find a path about five tiles long, and that is the best way to avoid the constant damage. If you are panicking, it is best to walk on the green hit splats rather than take damage from his fire. His fire does about 20 to 25 damage per hit, whereas the hit splats only do about 5 to 8 damage. Um, again, I'm going to show you just another version where the hit splat actually hits me because one of the best ways to avoid any damage at all is to start moving once he's um, used his sixth attack. Uh, because if you've counted properly, it should be whenever the acid pulls up. Um, just go ahead and start moving and you won't be hit by his acid pool barrage. As far as prayers go, you don't need to get rigor if you cannot afford it or if you're an Iron Man and you have not done Chambers of Zarek. Um, I only use Eagle Eye for my prayer and it works out pretty well for me. One additional note I wanted to make is anyone who has not yet done the Hard Diaries might find it beneficial uh, to do so if to do the uh, Kandarin Hard Diaries. Um, I think the highest level you might need is 75 smithing, uh, as well as enough points to buy a granite plate body um, from the Barbarian Assault uh, mini game shop. Um, but that will give you, I think, an extra two or two and a half percent on proccing your bolts um, effects, which is huge in a fight, especially with Warcath, especially the amount of time it takes. Um, I have, I think my quickest time is a minute and 47 seconds, and I think my longest time is about uh, three and a half minutes, mainly based on how frequently I can get the bolts to proc. Um, and last, but very much not least, um, when you're collecting all of the loot, when you're collecting all of the drops, um, the blue dragon hide is worth the basically the least amount, so it's best to leave that on the ground and take everything else. Um, but as you can see here, from only three kills, I've gotten almost half a mil, um, which isn't too bad given the fact that I only spent about 25, maybe 30k altogether on uh, potions and bolts. And once you get used to fighting Vorkath, once you get used to the um, attacks and the timing, uh, it's super easy just to teleport back to your house and drink out of your pool. As you can see here, I only have uh, Rejuvenation, which is Prayer and Special Attack. You can also use a Ring of Dueling to go to Ferox Enclave um, or just go to the House Party World. Thank you so much for watching this budget Vorkath video. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you watch the next video.